Hello everyone, Phil here from theaquascapeguide.com. Guess what we got? An FSOM Pro Series Dual Stage CO2 Regulator. Yeah, that's a mouthful though, huh? This thing looks pretty sweet. In part one of our playlist, we created a video on how to set up a CO2 system, but we kept things pretty generic. We've been wanting to upgrade the CO2 system on our Tropica Grot tank and thought, why not include you guys in the process? In this video, we'll take you through a step-by-step -step process on how to set up a CO2 system. We can't wait to get this puppy up and running. But before we start, we need to make sure we have everything needed to build a CO2 system. So here's everything you need and what we are gonna use for our build. You need a CO2 tank. We got a five pound tank off of eBay. A regulator, which will obviously be using the F-Zone Pro Series dual stage regulator. CO2 tubing. We're going to be using Aquatex CO2 tubing, but you could use another brand so long as it's specifically designed for CO2 purposes. You need a check valve. We really like these Aquatech check valves. We swear that they're bulletproof, which you want instead of one of those cheap plastic ones. This bad boy is going to protect water from getting back into the regulator, which can ruin it, so don't cheap out. And lastly, you need your method of diffusion. We're going to be using CO2 Arts inline atomizer, because I don't want to see a ceramic diffuser in our tank. We'll make sure to put the links to all the products in the description below. A couple of things first. Make sure that you do use CO2 tubing and not generic airline tubing. The tubing is going to be under a lot of pressure, which airline tubing cannot handle. And the CO2 will wear down the airline tubing, which can create a leak, which we obviously don't want. Also, the bubble counter does come with a built-in check valve, but we like to add a second one close to the method of diffusion as an insurance policy. Again, nothing like ruining a $135 regulator. And lastly, we went with a five pound tank for our 28 gallon aquarium. This should last us almost a year, which would be really awesome. Less refilling to have to do. Okay, now that we have everything, we need to get this bad boy set up. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. But first, we need to unbox this bad boy. The first thing I noticed when opening the box was all the foam. Gotta love that. Would hate for this thing to arrive all banged up in shipping, but f has got you covered. We've got a manual, then off comes the top, and here it is in all of its glory. Came with a little goodie box that had a US standard plug adapter in it, and the power block, and it looks like this little adapter just kind of snaps on in. And that was it for the box, kind of anticlimactic. f also gives you a couple extra O-rings in case one dries out in the future. That's pretty nice. And even this little Allen wrench, to add or remove manifolds in the future. Did you know this regulator can actually inject CO2 into multiple tanks simultaneously? Pretty crazy, huh? Maybe we'll do another video in the future showing how to add and remove these manifolds. Just look at this bad boy. The F-Zone Pro Series Dual Stage Regulator. Right out of the bat, we noticed this thing was pretty heavy. It feels really well built and solid. Like nothing's gonna break if you just look at it wrong. The connection type is a standard CGA320 connection. We have our little adjustment knob to set your working pressure. Two nice little gauges. One shows the pressure left in your CO2 tank and the other is the regulator's working pressure. More on that later. We have your electronic solenoid and needle valves for each of the manifolds. And lastly, we have the little bubble counters with built-in check valves at the top. Again, very impressed with the build quality. This thing feels like it's gonna be around for a while. Okay, now that we got that out of the way, let's get this bad boy connected to the CO2 tank. Again, this regulator comes with a standard CGA320 connection, which fits right onto our five pound tank. You could get an adapter if you wanted to fit a paintball tank, but we just suggest that you go with F-Zone's mini regulator for that. All we need to do is screw this bad boy on and we're good to go. Now, as you notice, there's a total of three knobs, two gauges, more on that later. But the knob on the CO2 tank starts the flow of CO2 to the regulator. The knob on the regulator adjusts the working pressure and the small knobs under the bubble counter opens the flow of CO2 to our method of diffusion. Again, we'll go into more detail later on all these things after we get everything connected. But next, let's build our CO2 line. This part is pretty simple. We need to unscrew our bubble counter from the regulator and fill it with water. The downside with water is that it will evaporate over time. But if you're using the pH drop method as we teach in our CO2 video, you shouldn't need to see your bubbles at all times. But if you really need to see your bubbles for whatever reason, then you can use a plant-based glycerin. It doesn't evaporate like water does, preventing you from having to continuously fill it. And the nice thing that if glycerin happens to get into your tank, it's water-based and will dissolve with no ill effects on your plants or livestock. Just make sure that it's pure plant-based glycerin and has no dyes or fragrances in it. 
Next, we want to unscrew the top cap of our bubble counter, move that screw cap to the CO2 tubing, then we push the tubing onto the end of the bubble counter's nipple and screw down the cap. Yeah, we said nipple, deal with it. When we screw it down, we wanna make sure that it's pretty tight. We don't wanna over tighten it, so don't go too crazy. But this connection can be a source of a leak and we'll go over how to troubleshoot leaks later. Then we wanna run our CO2 tubing up to the method of diffusion and cut it to its proper length. We don't wanna leave a ton of extra length in this line as it'll take more time for the line to pressure up, thus delaying the injection of CO2 into our water. Simply use the length you need to get from your regulator to your method of diffusion. Once we establish the full length we need, we'll wanna make a second cut close to the diffuser to install our check valve. Again, this is not 100% necessary. It's more of a redundancy or insurance policy to make sure no water gets back to the regulator, which can ruin it. Okay, so we have our CO2 tubing cut the length, our check valve installed. Next, let's install the atomizer. Now this part's a little scary as we have to cut our filter's tubing and install the inline atomizer. I like these inline atomizers as there's one less thing in our tank and they provide a really fine mist instead of small CO2 bubbles that a generic ceramic diffuser creates. When we are ready to install the atomizer, we need to make sure we are cutting the filter's tubing on the outlet side of the tubing, not the inlet side. We don't wanna be injecting CO2 in our filter as it can mess with our beneficial bacteria. Once the outlet tubing has been cut, we'll add some of these fluval rubber adapters to the end of the cut hose. Pop them onto the atomizer and then tighten them down. If you're running clear vinyl tubing on your filter, these rubber connections might not be necessary. We're using a Fluval 306 on our Tropica Grow Tank, which means we are working with a 17 millimeter or 16 by 22 size atomizer by CO2 art. Just make sure those connections are tied as well, as you don't want these puppies leaking on you. Okay, now that we have the atomizer connected, we need to connect our CO2 tubing. Just like the bubble counter, we need to unscrew the CO2 cap on the atomizer, move the cap onto the CO2 tubing, push the tubing onto the end of the atomizer's CO2 nipple, and screw down the cap. Yes, we said nipple again. Focus. Just make sure the connection is tight to avoid leaks. Okay, at this point, the system is built. Pretty simple, huh? Now it's time to turn everything on and check all the connections. The first thing we need to do is plug in our CO2 regulator. You might hear a click or a ping noise, and that's just the electronic solenoid opening up. When the electronic solenoid is open, it allows CO2 to flow through the regulator. But listen, no plug in no CO2. And this is why we set the regulator up on a timer or smart plug, which we talk about in our CO2 video. Again, link in the description below. Next, before we open the CO2 tank, we wanna make sure that the working pressure knob on the regulator is closed by turning it counterclockwise, or as you fancy people say, anti-clockwise, you know, weirdos. Once we confirmed that the working pressure knob is closed, we then wanna open up the CO2 tank and start the flow of CO2 to the regulator. We mentioned the two gauges on the regulator earlier in the video. Let's look at those now. As we open up the CO2 tank by turning its knob, we see the right gauge move. This shows us how much pressure is in our CO2 tank. This will show full for about 90% of the CO2 tank's life. Then over the course of a week or so, it will slowly start to drop, letting us know that we're getting low on CO2. Just glance at it once in a while while you're processing water changes, because you don't want to run out of CO2 and not notice before it's too late. If you do ever run out of CO2 and need a day or two to get it filled, you can simply just not turn on your light to prevent algae, but only for a day or two. Once the right gauge is showing pressure, then we turn the working pressure knob on the regulator. As we slowly turn it clockwise, the left gauge will start to move, showing us the working pressure of the regulator. The working pressure is how much pressure is gonna be pushed through the CO2 hose to our method of diffusion. The whole purpose of the regulator is to take the 1000 PSI coming from your CO2 tank and regulate it down to something like 30, 40 PSI. That's why it's called a regulator. The working pressure we set the regulator to is dictated by the method of diffusion and can vary between products. In this case, CO2 art recommends a minimum working pressure of 30 PSI, but we're gonna put it around 40 to 45 PSI to ensure we have enough pressure to create a fine mist that we're looking for. So we have the CO2 tank open, which we can see from the right gauge. We have the working pressure set to 40, 45 PSI. Next would be opening up our needle valve by turning the knob underneath the bubble counter. Now you hear, we teach the pH drought method around these parts. So if you have not watched our CO2 video we keep referring to, <coughs> we suggest you hop on that after this video and skip to the how much do I need to inject chapter of that video. 
but to start out, just keep things real low and slow. You want to open up the needle valve enough to get one bubble per second for something like a 10 gallon aquarium. Maybe two bubbles per second for a 20 gallon aquarium, three to four bubbles for a 50 gallon tank, and tanks larger than 100 gallons start with like six to seven bubbles per second. Now again, this is a low and slow starting point. From there, you want to test your pH drop and adjust as needed. For all those fishies and shrimps we have hanging out with us in our living rooms, just keep it real low and slow in the beginning. We definitely don't want to kill any of our livestock by over injecting CO2 from the get. Once we got everything connected and the flow going, it's a good time to start checking our connections. To do this, we take some warm water, add some dish soap, mix it up, and drip some of the soapy water over our connections. If there's a leak in the connection, then it'll start to bubble up, and we need to reset that connection. If we don't see any bubbles, then you know you don't have a leak and everything's connected properly. Yay! And that's it. We have a fully functioning CO2 system now. Let's recap. We connected the CO2 regulator to the CO2 tank. Then we ran our CO2 tubing from the bubble counter to our atomizer or method of diffusion. Then we installed our check valve close to the atomizer as an insurance policy, just to make sure no water gets back into the regulator. We then added the atomizer to the outlet hose of our filter, not the inlet, and connected the CO2 tubing to the atomizer. Lastly, we plugged in the regulator. Remember, no power, no bubbles. Then we opened up the CO2 tank, set the working pressure of our regulator to around 40 PSI, and adjusted the flow of CO2 with our needle valve, watching the bubbles on the bubble counter. We cannot stress this enough. Jump over to our CO2 video in the description, or at the end of this video, and skip to the chapter, how much CO2 do I need to inject to get your CO2 dialed in. The last thing we want is you guys whacking Becky, the first angel fish you got four years ago, okay? <laughs> okay, we just want you guys to keep all your fish and shrimp babies happy and healthy like our plants. And that's gonna be it for this video. We hope you all are doing well with the holidays approaching. Like always, reach out in the comments section if you guys have any questions, or if I goofed on anything. It happens, and we'll be back soon in another video. For now, we need to go test our pH to dial this bad boy in. Until next time, later scapers! <laughs> <laughs>